Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Splunk.conf19. Brought to you by Splunk. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Splunk's .conf 2019. It's the 10th year of .conf. And we have two great guests. Rick Fitz, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Groups at Splunk, and Karthik Rao, Vice President, Area GM of Signal FX. The big story is Signal FX. Wired by Splunk, Rick, you sponsored that. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, great to see you guys again. Yeah, great to be here, John. They just great broke a world record. They did. With a bike <laughs> sort of on the intro there. Uh, pretty exciting on what's going on here. A lot of records being broken. Splunk just continues to move the needle on capabilities, product, platform, brand messaging. Um, Signal FX, a company we've been reporting on since their founding, really in your wheelhouse. You guys bought them for a good number, big number. Yep. Why, what's going on, why, this, why the interest in Signal FX? You know, for a long time we've, we've been watching, uh, I would say perhaps patiently, watching the market and the trends. And we were really waiting for a time where the new application architecture was really going to kind of start to take hold. Where this cloud native trend that we've been seeing, where people are building applications, where people are actually delivering applications to market in quite a different way, would finally get some escape velocity. And we've been watching patiently for that to occur. Uh, and as we, we saw that last year start to, start to accelerate, really, we went out and surveyed the entire market. Uh, and of course, at the end of that survey, resulted in the acquisition of Signal FX and also of Omniscient. Uh, and so we bought those uh, two companies and have com combined them uh, to deliver on our vision of what we're trying to do for DevOps. Rick, you got you and I had a conversation in 2015 here in the Cube at the dot .conf at that time. You were on the IoT, you saw this wave. Mm -hmm. Again, it's been, you've been patient. Mm -hmm. What about IT operations that's happening now that makes this so critical to Splunk? Because IT operations, we know what automation is doing, machine learning toolkit, getting a lot of rave reviews. People love to automate things, but more apps are coming. What's the motivation um, now? What was the, what was the critical linchpin for you to make this happen? Yeah, exactly. I, I think what we're seeing is in traditional IT operations is this world where developers build these monolithic applications, hand them off to operations, and they operate it. And then in the same conversation, you'll get handed over to somebody running, if you will, developer engineering or, or cloud engineering, or they have various different levels for it, but you're really dealing with an engineering organization, and they're being tasked with uh, digitization of their enterprise, and very strategic investments are being made there, but they're also being asked to build things at high availability, high scalability, and highly reliable with lots of change. So it's kind of the competitive advantage of, or competitive advantage of the enterprise. And as I was seeing that occur more and more, I just saw the, the distance between IT operations and development kind of uh, separate. And I said, wow, that's, that's interesting because it's being driven by this new application architecture, a cloud native architecture. Uh, and I didn't want to be left behind. I wanted to actually be able to build a bridge for IT operations into yeah. this future. And I think this future trend is something that's going to be lasting for the next 10, 15, and 20 years. So I think this is, yeah. this is very strategic to Splunk and very important for us to get right for the long term. But I also see my role as a part of Splunk is to make sure that we take IT operations into this new world because these new, new worlds and, the, and, and if you will, the existing worlds, those, those operating models are quite different. Yeah. Um, they operate differently, they think differently, they, you know, in one they own their code, they're on call, in another one they're waiting for something to fix and then they try to, you know, we're waiting for something to break and then they fix it. Uh, so we're trying to actually help yeah. enterprises across that entire gambit. With and certainly strategy. with security, the theme here at this event is a security event too, yes. on top of everything, right? So yes. this is what it's turned into. That's right. Data is driving a lot of security telemetry and data is important for security. So yeah, I mean that's operations. That's right. And your apps have to be secure in both worlds. Yeah. So I think I think Splunk has a role to play in helping yeah. in this transformation for all of IT uh, as it becomes much more developer centric. And of course, as I said. That is really one of the strategic reasons why we led the acquisition of Signal FX and Omni. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how you handle the acquisition. Of course, we think we were fans of the deal. Mm -hmm. Kartik, I got to ask you: every single company in observability space is going public. Mm -hmm. You know, so why? <laughs> you could have gone public. Why Splunk? Why sell to these guys? What made made it a fit for you? Well, ultimately, we we look at a number of things, or we looked at a number of things in making the decision, and uh, we wouldn't have done this with anyone other than Splunk. Uh, just the strategic fit was just so great on so many levels. Um, you know, when we started the company, our goal was to solve the monitoring and observability challenges for anyone building a 
cloud native application. And we knew that was going to be a long road. There were going to be a lot of things we needed to invest in and develop. Um, and so we started on the metric side, we layered on yeah. distributed tracing, um, and we, we took a philosophy that we wanted to build an enterprise grade, uh, scalable, robust, uh, feature rich set of technologies. We weren't in the market to build um, you know, a, a SMB, kind of very simple, um, you know, limited type of a product. We really focused on the larger, more sophisticated customers. And so, as we looked at continuing to extend our portfolio, yeah. one of the things that we needed to invest in uh, was in the logging space, because you know, when you think about the trifecta of, of monitoring data types that you need, you know, logging is a big part of it. Um, and we knew that you know, we wouldn't be able to go and build a logging system from the ground up that would be robust enough to support enterprise yeah. use cases. And so we started a partnership conversation with Rick and team, and it just became very clear through that process that there was a tremendous amount of product fit, vision fit, culture fit, uh, values fit, like just everything was just so aligned that we realized that it, we could do so much more together as one company. So, you know, we, we rounded out the solution portfolio quite, or the technology portfolio quite substantially overnight by becoming a part of Splunk. And then the other part of it too is, you know, we saw as we were dealing with customers, we were dealing mostly with cloud native, cloud first uh, customers, but a lot of the customers that we were, or prospects that we were talking to are more traditional enterprises who uh, were not 100% of the way there yet. Some of them weren't even 10% of the way there yet. Uh, and it was difficult for us to really engage in conversations early with them to help them understand what does it mean to shift from traditional IT ops to DevOps, because we didn't have a relationship with them on the IT ops side of things. And so the other thing that we were really excited about being a part of Splunk is we can be a part of that conversation from the very beginning yeah. when the customer, you know, maybe they're just beginning to think about it and you know they don't have the urgency of doing it today, but we can be there with them from the very beginning and help them get there on their timelines. You know, this is an interesting discussion point because you, what you're highlighting, and I know we've had conversations about your company about being a platform, not just a tool, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're getting at is as you guys start to get more market share, you, your platform needs, you needed logging. And, go, and, and meet the market leader right here, right? Yep, so that's right. you guys need them, so partnering's hard when you're trying to build a platform. Now you can have a platform that enables partners to build on top of it, but components of a full baked platform, it's hard to partner. Rick, what's your thoughts and reaction to that? Because that's my statement, but do you agree with it? It's hard to partner in the platform, it's a core competency. Look, he struggled with logging, because he had to build out, a boatload yeah. of new investment, and you guys are just to catch up. Yeah, that's that's right. And I think the the, the thing that needs to be stated here is in your large scale enterprises, they are truly looking for the best of breed, highly scalable environments, right? That we're talking about here, and and they want. You know, they, they encouraged us to take a step in this direction. It was an obvious, you know, choice. And I think that has been the reaction that we've kind of heard universally. Like, this is a good, this is a great idea. This is a really strategic thing that you Splunk folks have actually done. Uh, and so that's that's really encouraging. So I would agree with you. I, I Partnering, and we, we were we were talking through it, but we just talk, it's like this one, this is better not to partner in this case. Better now, together. One of the things that's really important is that logs, you know, that's who we're all about. We've actually spent a lot of time in trying to invest into the streaming world of dealing with things in stream, and these guys have perfected it for metrics, which is, in you know, that's the strategic aspect of this. And then combining what they'd already done with tracing, with omniscient, it just it just doubles down on this future of yeah. this application architecture that I mentioned. So most, some M&As have a couple flavors to them, you buy a company, you throw them under a general manager, an executive, they kind of live there, uh, founders lead, you get the core tech, some team. The other scenario is, full team comes in, hits the ground running, they're building out, they're going to own the build out. It seems to me, based upon the omniscient acquisition, you're giving Kartik and team kind of some rain here to go yeah. build this out. Is that how you guys see it? That, yeah, that's exactly right. And so, uh, both, both Spiros and Kartik report to me. Um, I'm their onboarding czar, as it were. <laughs> uh, but really what we're going to focus on is customer success and achieving our business case and, and really capitalizing on the opportunity. These guys were running 100 miles an hour and we got to get them to go to a thousand miles and, and we're only going to make adjustments to the business case in order to achieve that. And, and that's what we're here to do, uh, is to shepherd this, this organization in its entirety to the, to the greatness that I think we all see um, out there. And, and uh, uh, we're going to do that in a very careful and cautious way. Kartik, um, um, Omniscient is an acquisition stealth company. Kind of a commitment saying, hey, here's some more horsepower. Talk about 
how that happened and what's the purpose behind that acquisition? Uh, well, I can I can let Rick talk to how it happened. <laughs> perhaps, yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell him the impact. Yeah, so, uh, and I'll talk about okay, the, the yeah, product. Plans, when we but. surveyed the market, we actually found that people have certain strengths. These guys had actually started their journey into tracing. Uh, I guess their first release was like last December, and so they'd made some strides. And we kind of found Omnition through this discussion, and we weren't like, oh my gosh. And we were in the process of doing the acquisition, doing due diligence. And we said everything on their roadmap is what these guys have done and vice versa. And that that was the, this is another combination that we can't pass up. This is, and when I told him the day we closed, I said, if you had the capital, you would have done this. And he's like, yeah, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> so One of the things that Rick had asked me during our process was, what are the top three things that you would invest in if you, you know, had Splunk resources behind you? And I said, microservices, APM, microservices, APM, microservices, APM, and so. <laughs> and, um, I, and I got a big grin, because yeah. I obviously couldn't disclose what we were doing. Yeah. Um, you know, the Omniscient team, they're, they're still in stealth, so there's not a whole lot yeah. uh, out there there on, on the web about them, but it's a phenomenal team. Uh, they've got people who are committers on some you know, major uh, open source projects, um, you know, deeply technical, very, very shared philosophy to what we had at SignalFX in terms of um, you know, open instrumentation, uh, not having any proprietary lock-in and how you collect and instrument data, very similar philosophies around leveraging the power of analytics and monitoring. Uh, and we just actually focused on different parts of the problem because we're both relatively Relatively, you know, early in this effort, um, so we effectively, you know, doubled up the team's capacity overnight and accelerated our roadmap by several quarters. So I'm really excited about what we can do together with them. Well, are they in the Bay Area? Or are they from? Uh there, Bay Area. Bay Area okay, yes. cool. Well, I um, want to get your guys' thoughts on the keynote today. Feedback was authentic, had a very cool keynote. As you guys bring this together, Rick, Kartik, and team, the optics, the messaging, what's the core positioning? What's, as you guys look at the holistic view now that you've invested in and are building out for customers, what's the posture? Take us through the keynote positioning. What's the marketplace customer message around the future here? Yeah, I think it's really clear that what we're trying to do for IT organizations and application development organizations is build solutions that are modern and helpful to their core mission. And, and by the way, as I mentioned, in the world of new development, it's, it's different. It's a different solution set, it's a different approach, a different operating model than it is in current IT operations. And so, one of the key messages we wanted to resonate is that we have the right solutions in both of these worlds for you, and that we're trying to develop an operating model of reactive response or quick response or engaging the right person in the problem through our use of VictorOps, for example, and using that as a way to be very intelligent about how we educate the people that are engaging in a resolution process. So we're, we are trying to create a bridge to both worlds um, so that, that they can both be successful. And then underpin that, of course, with automation that can be leveraged in both worlds as well. So uh, that's what we were trying to convey. Uh, we know it's early days. By the way, these guys have been with the company for three weeks. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, wow. Culture shock. Culture Throwing shock. the deep water. Yeah, let's throw you out on stage in front of 11,000 people and see if you can swim. And they did phenomenal, by the way. Uh, but uh, that was kind of the key message. And, and we're so excited because we just, we feel like we're just in the in the first inning of, a, of perhaps a 19 or 20 inning game because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, nice. uh, and it's going to be close out there, but we're, we're real excited to be able to bring this to market. I mean, it's amazing coming in now three weeks in to see the breadth of, of technology that's available in the Splunk platform. Um, and you know, what struck me today watching the keynote was just, you know, across, it's it's such a feature rich and such a broad platform from everything in, in the, you know, with the core indexing capabilities that everyone's known about a long time, all of the ML, the additional capabilities we're going to bring in on the yeah. metric side. Um, and then the use cases just across every Persona yeah. is just there, there's so much that we can do. What do you think of the culture? They run hard. They um, they're a playful company. They like to work hard, play hard, but yeah. they also are focused on real customer value. You got a great engaged communities. What's your take of the culture? So yeah, far? absolutely. I mean, culture fit was a really important part for us, right? If we're going to uh, be acquired by a company and and uh, you know be a part of a large organization, yeah. and uh, they're kindred spirits. I feel to the way we you know ran SignalFX. It's a um, you know very customer focused organization. Great technology and engineering culture, yeah. um, and it's hard to find both, right? Where it, it feels like every organization is, is very important and very well respected. It's not like heavily skewed to it's just all about engineering or it's all about sales. It's a very balanced um, culture and it's very customer focused. 
Guys, congratulations. Um, big deal. They don't see these kind of mega deals. Uh, they come along once in a while. Uh, it's a big bet. Good luck with everything, Rick. Thanks for coming on. Final question for both of you. What's the big takeaway to take back to the office as you leave .conf this week? What's, the, what's, what's, what's going to resonate the most with you guys that you're going to take back as feedback? Yeah, for me, it's, it's you know, I get my energies from, from, the, the, from customer conversations. Uh, we all do here at Splunk. You know, if you're having a bad day, go talk to a customer. Yeah. And then they walk you and stop you in the hall and say, you know, we really thank you again for doing yeah. what you do. And so it just, I, I take back from this always that what we do matters and is important and just keep, keep chugging along at it because we're yeah. doing some really good work out there that's really helping lives. Uh, and that's really important. That's good therapy. When yeah. it's been a bad day, talk to a customer. Go talk to a customer. Yeah. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your takeaway? I, I'm just, I'm thrilled at the number of customers who are coming up to me and, and saying how excited they are about the acquisition and, and working with us. And, yeah. um, you know, that's, it's very re, reaffirming for me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's super exciting to see what we You guys had a great tech following. A lot of tech leaders who knew you guys, knew you had good stuff, so congratulations. Yeah. Great validation. Yeah. yeah Thank good you. job. Thank Thanks you, guys for coming on theCUBE. Great insight. Thanks for sharing all that data. <laughs> data to everywhere here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. More coverage after this short break. Okay.